Welcome back. With Ukraine under attack, the sports world has been quick to rethink ties with Russia. FIFA has now banned the country from all international competition. With more on this, let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Dave Briggs. And Dave, the IOC now also under pressure to ban Russian athletes and officials. Karina, hi there. Yeah, this is a shocking reversal. Let's start, first start with FIFA, who I think was actually reacting to the IOC because just 24 hours ago, FIFA said they would allow Russia to play in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, which starts in November, although they'd have to play under a different name. They could not host matches. They could not use their flag nor their anthem. And then today they come out with the statement you see on your screen and say, yes, we are in fact banning Russia from the cup Largely, again, following the IOC's lead, and I'll get to that in a second, but also it was the three other teams that played in Russia's pool to qualify for the World Cup. Poland, Sweden, and the Czech Republic all said, no, sir, we will not play Russia under any circumstances. And the star player for Poland, Robert Lewandowski, told his more than 2 million social media followers that I'm sorry, this is not the fan of the footballers, the fans, but we can't pretend that nothing is happening here. He was really the lone superstar from these three teams to stand out and say, we will not accept this. And he brings up a good point. It's not the fault of the players, but we have to understand what sports, team sports are for Russia. They are a way to legitimize that country and to further their message. It is very nationalistic there, far more so than it is here in the United States. So this is a major reversal that match set between Poland and Russia. One month from now, uh, March 24th, looks like that will not happen unless fighting stops immediately. Russia cannot qualify. And I say the leadership came from the IOC. They said this morning they were urging all governing bodies in sports to ban Russia and that, I think, is what really nudged FIFA. That's a real surprise considering the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, has held the Olympics in China twice and Russia once since 2008. They allowed Russia to compete in the last two games despite a ban for doping in 2014 in those Sochi games. And they allowed them to compete under the Russian Olympic Committee. The statement from the IOC says we want to protect the integrity of global sports and the safety of participants. They are also, though, Karina, banning Belarus, who has supported the invasion of Ukraine and is housing Russian troops. I think we're in a different world now than we were six months ago, maybe even two or three weeks ago. Sports players and teams are standing up and saying, no, we have power. We will not accept this invasion. Great positive news. Yeah, it really is happening pretty quickly, Dave. Alexis here. Um, and, you know, another Hi. surprise announcement came in the world of baseball today, right? Derek Jeter, uh, no longer CEO of the Miami Marlins, and he um, is also stepping down as a shareholder there. I guess he was at the helm for four and a half, I guess, mostly unsuccessful years. Did, did this come as a surprise to you? <laughs> Awful years, my friend. Terrible years. <laughs> the worst in the National League. Uh, one of the worst in baseball. They're the lowest valued team in all of Major League Baseball. But this was actually a stunner, maybe even more so than that FIFA reversal. And if you check social media right now, this is the story trending in the United States from coast to coast. This is a five-time World Series champ, the most identifiable superstar owner in all of Major League Baseball. Yes, stepping down as CEO and also as a 4% shareholder. And basically, you're going to have to read between the lines. He didn't say exactly what happened, but he said the vision – for the future of the franchise is different than the one I signed up to lead. If you check the Twitter feeds of some of the star players for the Marlins, it reads as if they are very unhappy with the ownership of the Marlins, not named Derek Jeter. I don't think they're spending the way that Derek Jeter wanted, the way that he felt. They think there's about 10 or $15 million that they left on the table, and Jeter came there to win not to pinch pennies and try to make a few extra bucks around the revenue system that Major League Baseball has. He wants to win a World Series. That's the type of guy he is. Now, does he go away empty-handed? Absolutely not. The team they bought for $1.2 billion just five years ago is now worth $1.85 billion, more than $600 million increase in just five years. So we ought to do well. But this is bad news for a franchise that doesn't seem to be doing 
what it needs to to compete for a World Series. And this comes on a very bad day for Major League Baseball. It is the deadline, the 30 owners set for canceling opening day baseball games. They don't have a new labor agreement. And everything I'm hearing from both sides say we are nowhere close to a new labor agreement. So this will start costing players and we believe owners in the same neighborhood of around $20 million a day for every day they postpone or cancel from the regular season. It looks like the lockout is going to drag on into the regular season. Terrible news for owners, for players, for fans, and for those thousands of workers across the country. Okay, and I want to go back to that Russian ban for a moment because sports Please. franchises have been sort of really carrying the mantle, as you said. And, you know, there was this wonderful tennis player over the weekend, young kid, Russian, won his match and used the opportunity, the forum, to write on that camera, no war, please. I'm wondering, does the tennis world sort of take note and impose any sort of restrictions as well? I was lucky to see Daniil Medvedev win the U.S. Open this summer. Great match, great player. Is his top ranking in jeopardy, do you think? It's interesting, right? So that player you mentioned is a top 10 player in the world, wrote right on the camera, no war, please. Daniil Medvedev today took over the number one ranking in the world. And why is that significant? He's the first player outside the big four to be ranked number one since 2004. Immediately, the Ukrainian Tennis Federation stepped up and said that they believe he should be banned that that number went run ranking should not qualify. I don't think they will get a lot of support in that, quite frankly, because Medvedev, although he has not been critical of the invasion, he has certainly not been critical of Vladimir Putin. He has said uh, strongly that he wants to see peace. And what you have to consider, individual mm -hmm. sports are very different than team sports. He doesn't play, per se, okay. under the Russian flag unless he's playing in a Davis Cup or an Olympics, I think that number one, one ranking will hold. But you're going to see hockey federations around the world mm -hmm. step up and try to ban Russia. And that is a sport in which they dominate globally. Okay, we'll see what happens. Dave Briggs, thank you so much.